Okay, here we go. So Project Centers, would you introduce yourselves? Sure, my name is Rebecca Moody. I'm the director of the Morocco HUA Project Center. I'm Jennifer Rudolph. I'm a co-director of the Taiwan Humanities and Arts Project Center. Hi, uh, my name is Wen Hua Du. I'm a co-director of the Taiwan HUA and IQP Center. And we have a very important part of a <laughs> member, uh, member of the team uh, from IGSD or the GEO office now, the Global Experience Office, Candice. Yes, hi, my name is Candice Rita, I'm Program Coordinator in the Global Experiences Office, but I coordinate the Humanities and Arts off-campus application process. So um, just in charge of making sure that everyone has the information that they need to get through the application and hopefully travel to all these wonderful HUA centers. Thank you. And my name is Esther Baucheyib. I direct the London uh, Humanities and Arts Project Center. Okay, so why should I go abroad from, for my humanities and arts? Well, we, we have uh, many opportunities for students to complete their humanities and arts requirement on campus. As many of you know, and if you don't know, please ask us, you need to complete depth and breadth in your humanities and arts, which, you know, and, and the final course that you need to take is a capstone project. Uh, but this um, project centers offers you opportunities to complete this requirement on site uh, at a particular project center. So many of our students who have returned from our project centers have always reflected on their experience and say that, you know, it has changed their perspectives uh, and their worldviews because they have spent an extensive period of time between five to seven weeks at a project site. And uh, what is invaluable to many of the students is that they get to complete an interdisciplinary project on site. Yeah, so I encourage you to think about this because you get to not just stay ahead in your academics, catch up with your academics, but also get to complete um, many of the um, project topics which the center's directors will explain to you and be immersed in the culture of that place. So between five to seven weeks, you know, you get to see many things that many ordinary travelers, tourists will not see. Okay, so I hope you will think about this, consider this uh, as part of your education at WPI. And if you look right in the center of the slide, uh, if you choose this track or this path to complete your humanities and arts requirement, you don't need to consider the depth and breadth um, uh, uh, policies or uh, how, how you would complete this in a specific uh, sequence or in a specific discipline. Yeah? So that means students who come into WPI with credits for AP and accepted by the Humanities and Arts Department, you only need to complete two more um, courses in the Humanities and Arts, any two courses, and you have the basic requirement to be in one of these programs. So I'm going to start by explaining to you the two language-based project centers. The first is uh, at Constance in Germany. If you study German, you can complete the humanities uh, requirement in Germany. And the center director is Professor Brison, and she teaches German. Uh, students will be uh, part of the University of Applied Sciences in Constance. And if you don't know where this is, this is... Uh, a slightly biggish city uh, by Lake Constance, and I think it's very beautiful, uh, and it's very close to Switzerland and um, easily accessible to other parts of Europe. Yeah, so here's a beautiful picture. And um, Professor Brison wanted me to show you this. It's so close to this beautiful lake, and this is where students spend many of their time, uh, their free uh, time. Uh, and the climate during the program is mild and it allows you to not just uh, have a relaxing time by the, <laughs> by the lake, but also travel uh, around the region, okay? Uh, these are the courses that you need to take in order to complete uh, uh, the on-site or on-campus um, uh, part of the program, yeah? So you need to take German language and courses um, here on campus and then over at uh, Constance, you need to take uh, more intensive, more advanced language courses. The prerequisite to participate in this course, uh, in this program is a minimum of three courses of German or the equivalent, yeah? 
students have also gone to Constance um, as to do uh, some studies in German culture. Uh, so you can also complete this as a minor or specific majors in engineering. So please reach out to Professor Brison. Her email will be at, at you know, right the end of the presentation. So um, think about going to Constance to complete your language requirement or language uh, training. The next language-based uh, project center is in, at Argentina, Buenos Aires. Professor Madan teaches Spanish and students are able to complete their um, requirement in Spanish in Buenos Aires. Uh, so if you look at this slide, it's seven weeks, usually in July. Um, and students have part of August to complete their final paper or their capstone. Part of the program includes homestay in some of these uh, beautiful towns, really. Uh, and Professor Madden wants me to tell you that breakfast and dinner is included. So it's part of homestay. You get to uh, interact with family members and you get to know the culture in a very intim intimate way. Um, in Buenos Aires, you need to take three classes. Uh, the classes run from Monday through Friday for four weeks. So intensive Spanish, you have a little break and then you study a little bit about Spanish in context of the culture. And we partner with University San Andreas uh, and students uh, will earn credit, one third credit when they complete this particular class. The second class is led by one of our own WPI faculty member. Uh, and in the next program, uh, Professor Angel uh, Rivera will be the lead advisor. Uh, this part of the project or this part of the class can be completed in Spanish or can be completed in English. So there are parts of it where you, if you're not too proficient, you can complete uh, the blogs or some of the reflection writing in English. Um, so Professor Angel Rivera would be an expert in culture and he will um, lead and provide you with readings and um, instruction in cultural and social history of Buenos Aires. And finally, you would need to complete an independent research project that you will uh, negotiate and uh, collaborate and have some advice from the advisor, Professor Angel Rivera. And so the, uh, Professor Madden, who is the center project uh, center director has provided a timeline. Uh, so by week four, on site in Buenos Aires, you need to submit an outline for your research project. It could be on any topic. It could be interdisciplinary in nature, or it can be something that you have learned and discovered while you are there in Argentina. And at the end of term, uh, you will complete a conclusion and bibliography, and then you, know, you can take it back to campus in Worcester if you prefer to complete the project paper. So these are some of the wonderful things that are embedded in the uh, program itself. There are excursions, uh, there are trips, and uh, the advisor will be with you. Right, you can also consider um, spending seven weeks in this wonderful city called London. Uh, I am the center director and I'll be happy to answer any questions about the program at, uh, in London. Uh, this is slightly different at this project center. We ask that you spend our one week each uh, one uh, meeting each week with the advisor to prepare you for your seven weeks in London. So you will take a one six credit course called uh, Humanities and Arts Project Preparation. Uh, and in this class, you will meet with the advisor and talk about uh, uh, some of the classes and courses that you will complete on site. Uh, part of what I do if I'm teaching this is I will have students think about a project, think about a research area, or think about an interest that they want to investigate more while they are in London. So this is a very important requirement. We ask that you register for this term and meet with your instructor once a week to prepare you for uh, your, your seven weeks in London. So these are students who had completed the project and this is really the first day of their um, program. So in London, we will complete one third credit course called um, uh, HU 2910 Project Center Experiential Learning. This is a course where students uh, think about uh, places they wanna visit, 
the specific interest that they have about the city, about the, the culture in the city. And the center director and the advisor will help them plan uh, excursions and trips that tailor specifically to what they are investigating and specifically what they're interested in. Uh, so at the end of term, you will submit uh, what you have learned from all these visits and from all these excursions. So the advisor will take a look at your reflections and provide you with more feedback, not just about your writing, but about your insights about uh, what you are observing and what you are experiencing uh, in London. The second class you will complete on site is a, a topic within the humanities and arts. Um, it depends on the, the professor or the advisor's um, expertise. Uh, professors who are experts in history will present uh, a course with readings, discussions um, on, um, uh, that reflects the expertise uh, located in um, the project site. So when I'm teaching this and when I'm advising this, I have students think about have dialogues on multiculturalism in London and in Great Britain. And we see how migration impacted culture within the city. And it's very obvious and students learn so much through readings, looking back a little bit at history and looking at contemporary issues that the city and Great Britain is experiencing during that time that we are there. And of course, students write uh, short papers integrating uh, the readings that they have done and um, some of the ideas that they uh, have come up with in their um, projects. And finally, like many students, in fact, like all students at WPI, you will complete a capstone project uh, in London. So this is a, a seven week project which you began or which you will begin in D term. So it's, uh, it's a critical inquiry of one topic of your choice and that topic would have been agreed on before you leave for London, yeah? So on your own, you will do some researching and with the help of the advisor, uh, we will work on the bibliography, we will look at scholarly work, we will look at your experience there, uh, what you're interested in, and we will um, create and uh, develop a project paper, yeah? So it could also be in a form of a practicum, a deliverable, or something, um, um, a record of um, your experiences, um, readings, and artifacts that you collected during your time in London. Okay, so this is the next project center, and Professor Moody is here to share with us. Of course, I was muted. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Morocco. So I'm the director of the Morocco HUA Project Center. Um, go ahead and go to the next one if you want to. Uh, I also advised last year, so the, this is me with a group of students who went with me last year, completed their either their HUA requirement or a minor in um, a, an HUA discipline. So um, like Professor Boucher yet this is saying, um, you will do one of those two while you're in Morocco. Um, most students uh, have completed at least three HUA uh, courses and go to complete the second half of their HUA requirement. Some students, though, have already completed their HUA requirement and go in order to complete a minor. Um, it could be a minor in Arabic. It could be a minor in gender, sexuality, and women's studies, philosophy and religion, basically anything that you can think of in which you can do on the ground research in Morocco um, and, and therein fulfill the final three courses necessary to complete the minor. Okay, you can go on to the next one if you want. Um, so we, the project is centered in Rabat. Rabat is uh, the governmental capital of Morocco. It's right on the Atlantic coast. Um, you can see that down in the bottom left, you can actually surf in Rabat for about $10. That's the wetsuit and the board <laughs> included. And uh, some of our students tend to do that on a daily basis, but that's not the only reason that you should go. Um, while the other programs that we've been talking about so far are running this next summer, so in, in E-term, we're actually looking almost another year forward. So uh, this particular uh, project center will run again in D-term of 2022. Uh, so we will be in Morocco uh, from March 12th through May 6th, that's D term um, of 2022. You live in a dorm in a Rabat, 
uh, right across the street from that top picture. Um, so it's a very modern part of town. Um, it's also about a five minute tram ride. So this city has a pretty extensive tram system from the old city, which is about a thousand years old. So there's a lot of different um, aspects to life in Rabat that you can um, engage um, while you're doing your research and also just kind of exploring. Okay, next one. So you will take three courses while you're there, whether you're doing your HRA requirement or a minor. The first one is a language course. Um, there are no real re, uh, prerequisites for the Morocco Project Center. Um, we don't require that you're fluent in Arabic. Um, it would help, certainly, if you've taken some Arabic or if you know some French, but it's not a requirement. You will take one credit, or I'm sorry, one third credit, one course in Darija while you're there, which is colloquial Moroccan Arabic. You can see some of it written on this board. Um, on the uh, right hand picture. Um, this was actually, uh, I, took, I took this picture after a class um, last C term. So the students were actually learning what you see on the board. Okay, next. The second class is an experiential learning course, uh, similar to what uh, Professor Boucher was talking about. You'll see a lot of new things in Rabat and across Morocco that likely you won't necessarily understand. Um, Morocco is um, the, the culture itself is a mixture of lots of different traditions, lots of different groups of people who have come together. The westernmost part of Africa, uh, just south of Europe, um, it's been colonized for thousands of years by many different people. It's yielded something that's very complex, both in terms of language and religion and um, cultural structures. So we spent some time actually thinking about what it is you're seeing around you and how you can translate some of that into a greater understanding of yourself, yourself in Morocco, and what it is that you're seeing around you. And then the third course um, is either your inquiry seminar, HU 3900, or uh, that'll be if you're completing your HU requirement, or HU 3999 if you are completing a minor. This is your own uh, research topic. You get to choose what your topic is. Uh, you will do that in the PQP, which you will take in C term. So just like the London Project Center, we also have a PQP in the term before you leave wherein you will determine roughly what your project will be. And then once you get on the ground, you actually get to carry out that research. Um, it can be related to your major. It can be related to something that you may be thinking about in the future. It may be something that you're just interested in. I've had students who, um, who want to research something that has nothing to do with their major, but is just something they're interested in. And so they use this term as a chance to really explore it. Um, so this uh, one third credit course will be where you do that. So at the end of this, you will have earned one full credit um, or a full load um, and either come out of it with your HUA requirement or your minor. Okay, and uh, the Japan Project Center is directed by uh, Professor De Winter. Um, go to the next one if you want to. So this is actually an interesting setup. It's five weeks, also in E-term. Um, you spend time in three different places across Japan. So two weeks in Tokyo, two weeks in Kyoto, and one week in Hiroshima, um, with excursions throughout as well. So uh, you get to see a lot of uh, the different places and cultures in Japan, a lot of the different um, ways that we have come to know Japan. So interesting um, setup. Also three courses. The first one is pop culture and social change in East Asia with a focus on Japan. So um, I'm fascinated by some of the pictures that we see there. The second one is visual rhetoric or analyzing Japanese visual cultures. So you can see that Professor De Winter is really drawing on her expertise in IMGD and visual culture of, of Japan um, to give you an ex experience in um, what it is that's, that's around you. And then the third class, of course, will be your inquiry seminar, um, wherein, again, you get to uh, choose a topic and engage in substantive research about that topic. And we will have uh, Professor Rudolph and Professor Du to explain to us and describe to us this very new, very exciting, making its first debut today, the Taipei and Tainan uh, Project Center. Okay, I'll start, Wen Juan, and you can chime in. Um, so Taiwan, Taiwan is a very interesting place. For those of you who are familiar with it, you know it's off the southeast coast of China. And it's a small island, and even having this flag here, flag here is very contentious because 
uh, China claims Taiwan as a province, um, and Taiwan's formal name is the, the Republic of China, and mainland China is the People's Republic of China. So basically, there are two Chinas. And so by picking a flag to put on here, um, that is a political statement. Now, I did not make that statement. I didn't pick this flag, <laughs> so just to <laughs> know that. Um, but this is what makes Taiwan so interesting. Okay, get off there, huh? <laughs> um, so Taiwan is this small place that has an outsized importance. One, because it is a result of a civil war that has not been resolved, right? So you have two Chinas, basically, and Taiwan operates as an independent country, but it's not recognized by most of the world as an independent country. So that by itself makes it interesting. And then the island itself, even though it's very small, it's only a third of the size of Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania, so that's always my reference point for Taiwan. Um, so it's a third of the size of Pennsylvania. It has a population of about 23 to 24 million people, but it has one of the world's biggest economies. I think it's like 14th. And so, you know, it has this very important economic profile. It's considered a U.S. ally, um, in part because while China is an authoritarian regime, Taiwan is a very democratic country. Now, I've, I started going to Taiwan in 1985, and at that point, it was still under martial law. So it's a new democracy. It was an authoritarian regime before, but it's really democratized. And it is shaped by the civil war with China in many ways. And that, that shaping of it is represented by the two cities we focus on. Taipei is in the north, and it is the current capital of Taiwan. And Tainan is in the south, and it is the old capital of Taiwan. And most of um, the residents of Taiwan have been there for generations. They either came over in 1949, when they were fleeing the communist regime in China, or they came over in the 1600s as part of a wave of immigration across the Taiwan Strait from the province of Fujian. So you get two different types of cultures then. The North China represents sort of the mainland Chinese culture, and South China really represents a lot of the Chinese culture that is tied to like Fujian province. So we are focusing this project center in both Taipei and Tainan. So you get flavors of both. And even with the, the images I chose there, you know, Taipei is this big, modern, really wonderful city with amazing infrastructure. And Tainan is also a really impressive city, but really its focus is on the older culture. So what we'll do in this, this is in D21, and it's a five-week center. You see the dates there. We spend four weeks in Taipei and one week in Tainan. And we'll have lots of different excursions um, throughout, whether it's within Taipei City um, uh, area or to the suburbs or to some of the national parks, because it is a very small place and has a very efficient high-speed rail system and a very efficient subway in Taipei. We can do a lot of traveling very cheaply. So the themes for this project center reflect sort of the complexities or the many faces of Taiwan. Um, because when China became communist, and they tried to, to get rid of a lot of the old aspects of Chinese culture as superstitious and super, you know, just um, not conducive to becoming modern, they've gotten rid of a lot of these old customs, whereas in Taiwan, they embraced them. And you know, my background right here, you can see, is one of the temples in Taipei that we'd be going to. It's the Raoha Temple. It has a big night market. And you know, one of the, one of the types of, of themes we'll be exploring is local religions, um, because the temple scene just dominates the cities in Taiwan and the, and the countryside. Um, my, act, my research, I'm a historian of China, and I do political identity. My research right now is on a pirate that um, ruled Taiwan. He was from mainland China, but he's become this political um, hot potato, but everyone's like trying to claim him. Instead of trying to get rid of the hot potato, they're all trying to claim him. And so he's a living god these days in Taiwan. So you can be alive today and you could actually become a god in Taiwan if everything goes right for you. So that's one of the things we would be exploring is this sort of like living religion of gods in the temples and, and the type of cultural life that surrounds the temples in China. And so 
we would go to a lot of the temples in Taipei and then in Tainan, that's really what we would focus on. And then um, another one of the themes that is really wonderful in Taiwan, and I lived there for four years in different decades. Um, so one of the other themes I love is the food scene. The temples have a lot of community life around them. You have people going into the temples and worshiping. You have night markets springing up around the temples. You have, um, here I have, I brought props. You have lots of puppet shows as part of, I don't know if you can see my puppet here, but this is um, a very distinct part of Taiwanese culture is you've got lots of puppet shows that, that uh, just pop up around the temples. You have lots of Chinese opera that's performed around the temples. And so we'll be focusing on that temple life and the meals around it. The night markets are full of really amazing food. And in fact, um, the Michelin Guide, I don't know if you're familiar with the Michelin Guides for restaurants. They're, they usually go for like the top notch restaurants in the world, you know, three stars, four stars. In Taiwan, they've started a whole new category for night market food. And so it's not like the, the star system for your high end restaurants, but rather what is like the best night market food. If any of you saw Crazy Rich Asians, um, that Singapore also has a big night market food scene. So Taiwan's food scene is kind of like that. So that would be another focus of our, of our journey in Taiwan. And then also we'd be looking at its identity. Since Taiwan is not an independent country, although it operates like one, um, and it's claimed by China, it's like, you know, what is Taiwan? And it's a democracy, but China is a communist regime. And there is an independence movement in Taiwan. The US doesn't recognize Taiwan as a country, and yet we vow to protect it in case there is an invasion from China. So it's a really complex political situation. And you're all gonna see as in our upcoming election, China being vilified, and you're gonna see Taiwan inching up in the estimation of the US, this happens every election cycle, not just this one, but every election cycle, because it's a, a um, political weapon um, among our party system in the US. And so how do we make sense of that? That's how, you can go on to the next slide. That's what we're going to do. So our first class will be um, the same class that's offered in, in Japan. It's a class I developed, Pop Culture and Social Change, but we'll, we'll be focusing on Taiwan and on the temples and night market scene to try to make sense of that. How does that fit into everyday life in Taiwan? You see uh, one of the temples uh, on, on the screen and one of the night markets. Now these two, this temple and this night market don't go together. Um, the night market is in the, is the Sherlin night market and that will be very close to the dorm, the apartments actually you'd be staying in. And it is delicious and cheap and so much food there. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. The second class would be on democratization and contested identity in, in um, Taiwan. And this just gives you some visualizations of that. Taiwan's a small island. China is actually visible from Taiwan, from certain of the islands that belong to Taiwan. And the US has, is why Taiwan was never reuni reunified with China. Because we went, at the Korean War, we went through the Taiwan Strait and decided to protect it. So what is this identity of Taiwan? You have Taiwan floating as a little boat on top of the Chinese, the People's Republic of China flag with its own Republic of China flag. We'll be exploring that um, because it's, they're both, the People's Republic and Republic of China are both really important allies of the US. And um, so that's what we'll be exploring in the second class. And then in the third class, um, it is the capstone class. So it would be a topic of your choice. Oh, and you can see the Michelin Guide um, sign outside of one of the, the vendors at a night market here. Um, so you would get to choose a topic that you find really interesting that you would identify once we're in Taiwan. Um, and then you would work on that and try to gather information. Um, and you just to give you an idea of what these slides are, you know, the night market, then you see the top of a temple, you see the inside of a temple, and then you see um, the inside of Taipei 101. It's the 101 story building in Taiwan, in Taipei. And that, what you see there is, and I'm going blank on the name, but it's the earthquake mitigation system inside this building. Because Taiwan's in an active um, earthquake zone, but it has very um, good and effective 
uh, building codes. And so they have a 101 story building that sways during earthquakes, but it stays put because of this huge mitigation system. And so this is considered an engineering wonder. So if that's, that's what floats your boat, um, which would not be atypical of a WPI student, you know, you could work on something like that um, and how Taiwan has become this economic powerhouse through becoming a center for um, uh, engineering, uh, biotech. Um, it's a center of ecotourism these days. Uh, Taiwan, when I first started going in the mid 80s, was incredibly polluted and it was under martial law. Today you go, it's very clean, it's very efficient in terms of infrastructure, and it's a complete democracy. So it's a really fascinating place. So you would do that, and then you would come back, because we're only in Taiwan five weeks, you'd have two more weeks to finish up your paper. So that's the overview. Um, Professor Du, would you like to add anything? Um, I think uh, Professor Ruda have uh, given us a very thorough introduction about the courses, you know, um, you know, we'll be taking students to take in Taiwan during the HUA experience. And uh, also um, a very thorough uh, introduction of, you know, uh, the Taiwan island. So even though it is small, uh, you know, as Professor Ruda mentioned that it actually presents a very unique brand of, you know, both traditional Chinese culture and Western, you know, Westernization. So you could pretty much see the combination and the taste in the small island. Island. So, um, and one of the things I would like to mention is, you know, we actually partner with uh, Su Chao University, uh, which is a, a, a private university, very prestigious university in Taipei City. So students will be, you know, um, taking the dorm, there's apartment in Su Chao University. And it is conveniently located. It's actually about five minutes away by driving to the National Palace Museum. So the National Palace Museum, so as probably you have heard about the, uh, you, know, um, you know, the one in China, However, a lot of the artworks were actually currently in Taiwan. So, you know, there's another source of the, you know, the cultural, you know, explosion, you know, for the student who might be interested in the ancient Chinese artwork. Yeah. And it's very close to that Sherlin Night Market. The, the living situation. Okay, thank you. I hope, you know, just hearing about all these project centers have, you know, gotten you excited about thinking about completing humanities and arts projects at these project sites. Uh, but you also want to think about what the process is like. So we have um, the GO um, coordinator here, Candice Ruda, who is always very helpful and you will hear, you will get emails from her, reminders about putting in your application and uh, Candice is here with us and she'll um, help you understand what the process is like. Sure, thanks Esther, and thanks everybody for talking about all of your project centers. Um, so each project center, because the dates are different um, for when the projects are gonna run, the application timelines are gonna look a little bit different. Um, so for any of the E-term projects, which actually is the majority of the, the, the projects, um, the application will open um, towards the end of A term, beginning of B term, hopefully. And that will stay open through the end of B term. So you have plenty of time to get your application in. Um, and if you have questions, you can set up, uh, set up times to speak to me about that. And we will notify students in early C term um, whether they have been accepted to the project centers. And then we would go through the process of um, getting you enrolled in a pre-departure Canvas course. Um, but in terms of the actual application, it's very similar to the IQP application, if any of you are also applying to IQP. So there will be a couple of essays. Um, we will collect your transcript, review your transcript. We will have you sign a, a conduct waiver. So we'll review that as well. Um, and then, you know, you will um, submit two names for recommendations. So there isn't, um, the biggest difference is that you can apply directly to whichever project center you're interested in. So um, it's not a matter of having to rate every project center and then being selected for one, which is what the IQP process consists of. So um, for Morocco, it will be a little bit later in the academic year that we, um, that we recruit and have you fill out the application just because that's not gonna run until much later next academic year. So um, there's plenty of time to consider your options and think about sort of what you 
um, may need to do to set up your schedule in order to be able to go. So like everyone mentioned, um, you do have to have some HUA courses completed in order to, to participate in any of these project centers. So, um, and then the other big part if you are interested in Buenos Aires is that you will be, um, that application will close a little bit later. It'll close probably in February, early March. And you're also going to have to have a language interview with the institution in, in Argentina. So that process looks a little different. So again, if you have specific questions, you can contact me, you can contact the center directors. Um, and I think there's some time for some questions. I think I just saw something come through the chat. Yeah, there's a question about Japan. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this slide here and then, you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask either, you know, in the chat uh, feature or you can just unmute and ask a few questions. But, you know, before you go, we just want to say thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions and, uh, about the cost, about when it, it is offered again, uh, all the information are available on e-projects, so right here uh, on this slide. Uh, but we're happy that, you know, you have shown some interest and we hope you will continue to have conversations with us about your choices and considerations. So I'm going to stop recording.